Believe it or not, Natasha Owens we is have her here. right here yeah. <laughs> in the studio. She's a singer, songwriter, and giver of hope. In 2010, Natasha's father died suddenly. We're going to hear her testimony yeah. about that whole incident. Uh, and she went into deep depression. Mm -hmm. Good to have you. Thank you. Thank do you, you know? You, do you know you're really talented? Oh, <laughs> it's God. If they see and hear God and not me, then I've done my job. As a little girl, were you singing? I was. I come from a very musical family and was singing uh, in my grandfather's church a lot. What um, kind of church? 
United Pentecostal. Oh my goodness. Was raised UPC. Mm -hmm. and they stood to their feet, didn't they? They, oh, they sure did. <laughs> they sure did. Hung from the rafters a lot. <laughs> I was going to ask you how you got started, but you're saying since you were a little girl, you like Yeah, but I, I've always had a little bit, you know, have the oldest child syndrome, have a little bit of anxiety, yeah. personality. Yeah. So are you an introvert <laughs> or extrovert? Uh, I probably, if I wasn't propelled into music and into my career and so forth, I'd probably be more of an introvert, but wow. I'm, I'm, I'm having to be an extrovert. Yeah. yeah. And so I just always wanted to blend in the background. They would want to pull me out for a solo and I'd blend back to the choir, you know, every once in a while solo, but but wouldn't stand up front. How did you make the step into where you are today? That's a long story, but it's all from my recovery through my depression. That was uh, what God called me out to do in the middle of that depression was a training ground for what I'm doing now. Now your dad yeah. was cleaning a gun. Cleaning a very dangerous gun, a Glock, and there was a bullet in the chamber and uh, he missed a step some way, and he's sitting at the table cleaning it, and when he took the slide off on that particular type of gun, you have to pull the trigger, and there was a bullet in the chamber, and it went straight into his heart. Oh, wow. So, six, 50, 58 years old. 58. So, life as I knew it ended that day, I felt. And you were close? He was, he was everything to me. We were very Daddy's close. girl. Daddy's girl. How old were you? Uh, let's see, that was seven years ago, so... I'm sorry, okay. I'm sorry, 34. <laughs> Just say 34. Years ago. <laughs> so, wow. so, you went, happens to a lot of people, in depression. Yeah, I, I was the strong one in the family. I'm the oldest. Tried to hold everybody together. Yeah. My grandkids, I mean, his grandkids, which were my kids, his only grandkids, uh, they really took it hard. So when I grieved, they down spiraled. So I from many different directions, I taught myself to just hold in the broken pieces and nod my head and smile and say, everything's fine and I'd keep going. Well, about an hour, uh, well, about a year past his death, I, I started uh, um, dealing with grief and it hit me so hard because I had suppressed it for so long. And Did you I, have that where you didn't want to get out of bed? Yeah, that happened very quickly. Um, I questioned why. And that's a very dangerous question because nine times out of ten, you're never going to get an answer. True. Mm -hmm. I have to, now I know I have to ask every time I go through something, what do I need to learn and who do I need to help? Oh, that's so good. But not why. So I was very angry at God because I didn't get an answer. And that anger and the things that I spoke caused me to, to down spiral into a depression. Now, I understand your pastor was instrumental he was. in getting you out. He was. Uh, six months into my depression, I was already not getting out of bed most days. Um, and I couldn't even open up my Bible and I couldn't pray. I was just to that point where I put down that wall. And he called and he said, I really feel like you need to be our music minister. And I laughed at him and I said, let me just tell you where I'm at. I can't get out of bed every day. I have nothing to, to give. I would give it to my kids if I had it. And I said, you want me to motivate people and tell them how great God is on a, on a weekly basis when I don't feel like he's great right now. And he said, just think about it. And he kept calling and he called the last time and he said, um, wow. I don't want you to talk, I just want you to listen. He said, God will always give you a lifeline and I think this is your last lifeline out. And little did he know what I was dealing with that day. The devil had already convinced me that life would be a better place without me. So, so suicide was entering your mind. It was already entering my mind. So I, I can honestly say that I don't think I would be here today if it wasn't for God crossing my path exactly when he did. Wow. Um, so I took the position and I said, I can't open up my Bible and I can't pray. Is that the type of music minister that you want? And he said, that's the type of music minister that God wants right now. And it's a process. He will heal you if you get up there and as you minister to people, he will give you an unending flow and you will get your healing in return. And he just said the right things. So I said, I will do it. And that week I would, I started working on music for that weekend and God just started bringing songs to my mind. And as I turned them on 60 seconds later, I'm up getting ready. So I knew that that was a, a tool that I could use to get out of bed every day. And I used music until I was able to um, open up my Bible and start praying. And that was a training ground for what I'm doing now because he taught me so much in that time frame. You know, 
that pastor. If, if you're looking today and you go, what is a pastor? Mm -hmm. That's a pastor. Yes. What he did. What pastor would allow someone up to lead his congregation that can't even pray or read their Bible? Mm -hmm. But he knew that God, that the answer that he got was from God. He knew it. Mm -hmm. He just couldn't let it go and he just kept coming back. And I thank God for that because um, it, God saved me. Now you had to get music out of people that not necessarily have the gift you have. So how do you do that as a, as a, as a leader? I wasn't even qualified for that position. That was what was so funny. Could you hear somebody's off? Oh yeah, okay. I was all, I'd always been a soprano. So you have to train your, your ear for harmony parts and things like that while sopranos at that time all, in my religion always sang lead. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have the two part harmonies, we had three part harmonies. And I didn't automatically hear it. And um, I, did, I didn't know how to play the piano, but I could hear by, me, by ear. So I took a keyboard and I labeled all the keys and I would pick out the parts and write out the parts so that a, a musician could help me during practice teach the parts. Wow. Took me hours to do that. But, and then I had to learn. That was um, therapy too, wasn't it? Yeah. It, it was training for my ear. Mm -hmm. I had to. I didn't know the terminology of how to even communicate with the musicians. They, they they had a lot of terms that they made fun of me about because I would say, yeah, do this, and I would give them a term, and they'd say, that's not what that's called. And I'm like, well, you understand what I'm talking about, yeah. you know? <laughs> just so, do it. Just do it. <laughs> yeah. So um, I I had to I had to dig myself, allow God to help me dig myself out of depression, battlefield what was going on in my mind. Yeah and learn this whole another job outside of running my our own businesses and my kids and all of that and i just held on and said okay god you got to bring me through and every day was a different training so you were married when this happened to your father yes yes i've been married 22 years and this this happened seven years ago wow goodness gracious so I, you said businesses tough. you guys have businesses yeah we have some businesses in texas that we've had for almost 18 years wow what are they we sell cable equipment to cable companies and build their cable TV head ends. Mm -hmm. Wow. So So you uh, could step out of music and you'd still have a living. Yes, in fact it's the it's the business that helps fund the music as a ministry for me. Oh, that's wow. great. Now, how did you move into songwriting? That was a whole other thing because when we uh, we, we pulled from the uh, writers the very first CD to create a CD called I Made It Through and it was the beginning, if you put them in a certain order, beginning to the end of making it through a trial. Wow. So we created this music and then after that CD was done is when all the music doors started to open and that's a whole other story in itself. I mean God has been with us the entire way. And so... Because I'm fascinated with people who <laughs> do what you do. Really, I can't do it, but it, somehow I just I'm attracted to it. Yeah. But how do you how do you know you have a song? In other words, you know, I mean, I, I'll say things when I'm in the car, you know, and go, "That'd be a great song." No, it yeah. wouldn't. But how do you know you've got one? Well, let me tell you this. This this will blow your mind too. So my husband, who is not musically inclined, he's tone deaf. He's a handsome guy. Yes, and he is just wonderful in so many areas, but music is not one of them. <laughs> and so we're out on the road, and you know he's a part of the ministry side of it, and he's ministering to yeah. the band as well as others. Because this is a and, business too. Yeah, and so he um, he got really down for about six months. He could not find his place. He wanted it to yeah. be more yeah. in depth in the singing and the music, but he couldn't find his place. And yeah. so I just got kind of mad at him one day and I said, well, just pray about it. I don't know what to tell you. You know, you're here for me. You're here, you know, I don't, yeah. I don't know what to tell you. So he said, he's got the crazy faith. And he said, okay, I'm gonna pray that when I wake up tomorrow, I'm either gonna play like Liberace or I'm gonna sing like Pavarotti. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> you pray that. <laughs> So um, he it. woke up the next morning and he couldn't play or sing, right? Yeah. Well, about three days later, he said, um, I'm having this dream. I've had this dream for three nights now. And he said, it plays out like a music video in my head and I cannot get it out of my head. And I said, well, tell me about it. And he started telling me the story that he has dreamed about. And I said, that's exactly how I felt in the middle of my depression. Like word for word, it's perfect. Write it down, that's a song. And so when it came to writing for this new album, 
um, I didn't even know if I would be able to write or whatever, but we took that notepad out and we took that song and the head of my band start, just started playing a, a tune and we wrote, within an hour, we wrote No One But You from this new record. And it's, that has a special place in my heart the way it was written. Mm -hmm. And since then, God is giving him hundreds of dreams that oh he just keeps gracious. filling up really? in this binder. And we we're, we're like keep writing songs from them. So he found his place in the ministry part, in the song part, uh, as being a co-writer. It, it was faith? Yeah. yeah. I mean, just to step out. And so we went to Ed Cash, who, uh, that was a whole God thing. Um, you know, he's written, How Great Is Our God, Whom Shall We Fear, I Am. Wow. Just about anything you love in contemporary Christian, he's had a part of it. And number one songwriter for 15 years in Nashville. Wow. And so my manager called and said, she just wants to sit down with Ed and tell her, tell him her story. And he said, they said, well, you know, if we choose you, it'd be a lower level intern and Ed's hard to get to and so forth. Well, God made a way for us to sit down with Ed. He always does. And we brought the No One But You song and I, I wasn't, you know, I thought it was good, but just sure. didn't know what he would think, you know, and presented it with him and, and he loved it. He absolutely loved it. Didn't really change hardly anything on it. And um, so we, we had a few other songs and then, um, I'm telling him this story. Uh, so whenever we created that, I made it through CD. I really thought that was my mission and going out and, and trying to help people make it through because they get stuck mm -hmm. and they don't make it through and they don't ever feel that joy back in their heart. Right. And so um, we had our very first concert on my dad's birthday and it was with Michael W. Smith. My whole okay. story is backwards, but on my dad's birthday was my very first concert. And um, after that concert, we had worked so hard, but we didn't have anything else. And I prayed that night and I said, God, just guide me. I don't know what to do from here. And two days later, uh, I, a woman that I used to go to church with um, emailed me and she said, I had this dream and I don't know what it means. But she said, it kept saying, I made it through is not the true message that rising above is the true message and I will take you there on wings. And I called her and I said, did you know I have a CD called I Made It Through? And she said, I had no idea. So I knew that was the answer to my prayer. Yeah. And so I'm sitting there telling Ed that story. And I said, I came in with an org chart. What musician comes in with an org chart? You can tell I'm very analytical. <laughs> and I had uh, Rise Above in the middle. And then every song branched out from there that, that taught, taught a person how to rise above just a different topic. And I said, but I don't have this core. And I told him that story and he says, excuse me a second. And he leaves and he comes back and he acts very distracted. I think our time's up. And he said, as you were talking to me and telling me that story, God gave me that song and it's the We Will Rise song. And he started singing the chorus wow. and we haven't changed anything from the chorus that day. And I started crying and I said, that's exactly what I need. And then I got scared because I thought he'd give that song to anybody. And I said, can I have that song, Ed? And he said, God gave me that song for you and I want you to help me co-write it. And he said, I'm gonna be your producer. I'm gonna do the background vocals. I'm gonna, this is going to be my, my project. Wow. Isn't God good? God's good. <laughs> So I, I got cold chills all over me. <laughs> you could see if I had hairs over here, they'd be standing straight out. But isn't isn't that amazing? How the spirit of God mm -hmm. just takes care of His children, Does. takes them here, puts them there, puts them in the presence of somebody that He says, "This is where I want you to be," and then all of this develops. Mm. Yeah, He's He's guided our footsteps. You know. When now, what did that feel like on your dad's birthday? It was very, it was so emotional that I didn't know if I could quite do it. Mm -hmm. You know, at that time, he'd only been gone a couple years and, you know, every uh, milestone was hard for me. But God gave me such peace. And Did um, you lose it in, 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 in the song or? I didn't. I kept it together and I, I actually did a tribute to him that night and I uh, told him that it was his birthday and that he was looking down and I know he was proud and mm -hmm. kept it together the whole night. It's only because God was with me, you know. Yeah. And you're going. You're going to. We're going to have her do a live. You know. You saw the. You saw the video. Mm -hmm. Which I just. I was just impressed with the way they did that. Yeah. You uh, love that. I got to tell you something though before we get to that. 
I got to tell you something. This girl's, I'm actually holding her hand, great, great grandmother <laughs> delivered Elvis <laughs> in Tupelo, outside of Tupelo. Sure did. Her great, great grand, because I love Elvis, delivered Elvis and his brother. Brother. Sure did. And the brother, of course, was stillborn, right? Yeah. Yeah, she that? didn't get credit in the history books, but... Uh, <laughs> I know, because I've got uh, probably every writing about him that you yeah. could possibly have. Yeah. She was a midwife, right? She was a midwife, and she was a neighbor. They went to the same church, and, you know, uh, they just... She came running and helped her, and then the doctor... It was hours before the doctor got there, of course. The brother wasn't pronounced dead until then, and then, uh, you know, he was the acting doctor on the record. Wow. But she did. Now, can you give me a background on the song you're going to sing. Josh is going to be on the piano. Yes. Josh, you can you can go to the piano. Good looking Josh with a hat. You can be seated at the at the at the piano. <laughs> and you get you gotta you gotta catch Josh's boots because we're both boot guys. He's got a <laughs> pair of Lucases on. They're <laughs> lizard and I got my alligator Lucases. We're boot guys. <laughs> but give me a little background on this and then you can just Sure. Do your thing. This this song has a place in my heart for di for a different reason. Um, my dad, the year he died, he wrote a Sunday school lesson about the dash, the old poem that just yes. says on your tombstone, it's yeah. not the beginning date or the ending date, it's the dash in the middle that represents your entire life. Wow. The smallest part of a tombstone. And so he went on to say um, in his lesson, what does God want to see in your dash? And what do you want him to say whenever you make it to heaven? Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Yeah. And so what we did, it's a, uh, the, he's buried in Memphis, and it's an entire length of his tombstone, um, is we took his words from his lesson and we wrote what it is about the dash, what God wants to see, and that his dash was 58 years long. And so I brought that tombstone, the words from the tombstone to Ed, and I said, I want to create a song in honor of how my dad viewed life, how he lived. My dad lived with unconditional love and wow. he was so selfless and wow. he gave he gave more of himself than he got from anyone in return. And he felt that that's the way God wanted him to live. Wow. And so we, um, we didn't want to get mess, mixed up in the trademarking of the dash or anything, but we wanted the concept. And so we wrote the song uh, called Legacy. Legacy. Do no, no. Right up there. Josh, do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> Natasha. I love first names. Josh and Natasha. Okay, here we go. Legacy. This tapestry worth passing on. Life cannot be measured by the things we obtain, but only by the things we give away. Let my heart be reaching out to go the extra.
I feel kind of weird standing next to a musician. <laughs> Josh, you did. You got into that, man. Yeah. <laughs> do, are you, do you write songs, too? I do, yes, sir. Wow. How does this relate to what you talked about your dad, that song? We're, we're leaving right now. We're leaving. Okay, we'll get into that next time she's on, okay? okay. We'll hear the end of that. Thank you for joining us. Love you. God bless. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching It's Time. If you have recently made a decision for Christ, Herman and Sharon would like to hear from you.